In the last couple of years, it was seen that grassroots refereeing is in a state of crisis. Over the years of me being a referee in the, la in the last four and a half years, I've been headbutted, I've been punched, I've been spat at. We've had referees going on strikes. We've had stories of physical assaults making the headlines. And there's been reports of declining participation. There was a late tackle, it was, it was quite a bad challenge. That led to sort of a mass brawl breaking out in front of the dugouts. The manager followed me around um, the centre circle. A fight broke out on the other side of the pitch. I actually went back into the referee's room, broke down in tears, um, because what I'd seen, I'd never seen before. Just like millions of other people in England, I play football at the weekends. And if there's no ref, there's no game. Nothing there, no! We want to find out just how bad abuse towards referees has got and if anything is being done to combat the issues, either at a grassroots level or on high at the FA. I still say to this day, if it happened on a night out or in a public place, they would have all been arrested, but because it's on a football pitch, it seems a blind eye is turned to it. It's a Sunday morning in South Manchester and we're here to meet Ryan Hampson, who is a young amateur referee who has previously received verbal and physical abuse. In 2017, Ryan organised a nationwide strike to raise awareness of the issues facing grassroots officials and has previously campaigned to wear a body cam during matches. He is also an ambassador for Ref Support, a charity that supports referees suffering from abuse. I know you're not happy with him, but you're making my job harder with right. reactions like that, all right? I don't want to see that again or you'll get carded, okay? Go on, I've just said the same thing, let me deal with it and you focus on your own team, okay? Thank you very much. Let's go. Uh, over the years of me being a referee in the, la in the last four and a half years, I've been headbutted, I've been punched, I've been spat at. Today there was no signs of any of that happening at all. Well played, boys. Well played, lads. Great tackle. Well done, it's fine. Can you speak and explain a little bit about your strike? Because that, that, yeah. that, that's something that really did catch attention. What The, the strike, it was a way of standing up and saying, no, enough's enough. We're not being backed, so let's let's do something about it. And it, it went massive, it, you know. I expected 30, 40 referees to strike. Over 2,000 nationwide striked. It culminated in me being invited by the FA all the way to Wembley. And we're very grateful as a, as a charity for what the FA have brought in in terms of the mandatory bans, in terms of five-year review assault of referee. But it's not enough. The new initiatives, the respect campaign that's been brought out, I don't know, not one person I've spoke to even speaks about it. You know, these are, these are campaigns that the FA are bringing out, the FA are piling money into. And what are they doing? They're having no effect. Um, I've made it clear to the FA and where everybody coming today. They've stated to me that I can get suspended from any, anything between 7 to 28 days. Or, if deemed, it could be um, indefinite, an indefinite suspension, which, could be until, which means until further notice. And we don't see how body cameras will have any negative effect on football. All we see is as a positive, it's another deterrent to stop referee abuse and assaults. It's taking away that my word against yours. Exactly. And it's, it's taken and, away. And it's accountability. Yeah. Neil Barry, the head of referee in the FA, said to me, we at the FA have no appetite whatsoever for body cameras. And did Neil Barry explain why there's no appetite for body cameras at the FA? I asked him. He then, he, he turned round to me and said, you know, it's just the fact that we've got other measures in place that, that do work now. And, you know, I was saying, they don't work. Them measures that you've got in now in terms of, you know, a referee reporting it, speaking to the county FA, that, that it's not working. It's, it's, it doesn't make no difference to these players. So when we add that in, and we know for a fact as a charity, with our hotline, the amount of calls we've received on abuse and assaults that have then gone to appeal and been not proven, we know that there's at least two assaults on referees a week, without a doubt. Anything at all that anyone suggests that will help referees is great. However, all I see is a lack of people suggesting things. Good luck with your season, lads. It's absolutely horrifying to hear about Ryan's experiences and his frustration with implementing real change. With body cam seeming like a non-starter, it'd be interesting to see if there are any other initiatives around the country that have been better received. So we've come today to Fleet Spurs Football Club. We're going to meet Ella Chandler. She's a young woman that's actually quit refereeing following an incident on this very pitch. So Ella, we're back on the pitch where the incident happened. Can you tell me a little bit more about what happened that day? So left winger was running down the wing, um, was intercepted by the right back. There was a late tackle. It was, it was quite a bad challenge. I would have originally given a red card anyway to the player because um, it was quite dangerous. And then that led to sort of home team and away team um, all getting involved um, and sort of a mass brawl breaking out in front of the dugouts. As a referee I was always taught with mass brawls actually to step back and um, don't get involved um, so that actually you can see everything that's going on 
I know if I'd got involved in something like that, I would have got very hurt. The sort of second thing we're taught is actually because of a mass ball, you can't see everything that everyone does and to just sort of even it up and go, okay, in my head I knew I'm going to send two of the away team off, two of the home team off. Um, went to send two of the away team off and the manager followed me around um, the centre circle telling me that I didn't know how to do my job. I actually felt quite threatened at that time. He was much bigger than me, he was much taller and he was obviously quite aggressive because of the incident that had happened. So once everything died down, did the game resume or was it abandoned? I didn't want to abandon the game. Um, all the players and managers that I needed to leave did eventually leave. Um, so we played out the final two minutes um, and I've literally upon blowing my final whistle, I had my back turned facing towards the dugouts and a fight broke out on the other side of the pitch. How do you feel when you're kind of getting back into your car or when you're going to leave? I actually went back into the referee's room broke down in tears because um, I'd held it in for so long and then I just I just needed to get it out because what I'd seen I'd never seen before. Um, I still say to this day if it happened on a night out or in a public place they would have all been arrested but because it's on a football pitch it seems a blind eye is turned to it. So how has that day impacted your life and career? First it's led to me not refereeing any more. Sort of the aims for me were to referee um, in the Women's Premier League, in the Women's Super League, um, either as a, a referee or an assistant. Um, and I would have hoped now I would have been sort of here with either level six or level five um, referee status. And what about now? Do you have th the same ambitions or? For me, potentially now, I need to build my confidence back up in the women's game. I think it will happen, um, but it it will just take a little bit more time. So regarding these incidents, would you like anything to be done differently in the future? I do believe there needs to be more support from county FAs. I didn't actually receive any um, support afterwards, um, didn't receive any support at the personal hearing. I know I didn't outwardly go and seek it, but perhaps if I had had that, I might have come back sooner to the game. Ella's story is another awful example of abuse, but it's important to know the facts on how widespread the problem has got, and if it's just an English problem, and also if it's just a football problem. So we've come to Portsmouth today to meet Dr Tom Webb. He's a senior lecturer here at the university uh, and his research has a lot to do with comparing the UK with other countries in, in regard to abuse and also in regard to other sports. So what are the biggest takeaways that you found in your research? There was a culture of abuse. We found that what we were really interested in was what, what impact the RESPECT programme had made. So we did the research, uh, published it last year. Um, what we found was there was still a lot of referees that were almost disenchanted, disenfranchised, felt that they weren't supported, weren't listened to, and that were still suffering verbal and physical abuse. Once we found that, we were really interested, in, okay, well, what about outside of the UK? We went to UEFA and they were kind enough to, to fund us to look at and work with two other FAs in, in France and the Netherlands. So compared to abuse in the UK, what are the kind of top line figures that you found in Holland and in France? In, in England, what we found was the, the frequency of abuse, verbal abuse in particular, was, was much more often. So every game or a couple of games, it was around 60% of referees that responded to the survey were saying they were uh, receiving some form of abuse. In, in the Netherlands that was about 2.2%, in France it was about 15%. So there are quite big differences. So football is perceived to be uh, worse in terms of abuse than other sports, but what have you found with other sports such as uh, rugby union and cricket? Referees are not, or umpires are not as abused as often. Um, the frequency isn't as great, but we were still finding around about the 50% mark and higher being verbally abused. Um, at some point, which again in those sports is, is high, you wouldn't expect it to be that high. But the MCC acted quite quickly, so they've brought in red cards, for example, for umpires. So that's coming globally um, because they realised that there, was, uh, there were incidents of abuse that were starting to escalate. That's interesting because the MCC has a, a reputation as being a kind of traditional old governing body, uh, but it's actually acted in a really proactive, stern way here with, to implement real change. And that's sort of what people want to see from the FA, isn't it? We do have to do something, you know. I think we're, we're getting to the point in the research, certainly evidence is that, that, that we're, these incidents are, are happening and they're relatively frequent and um, that something needs to happen. What we've seen from Tom's research is that physical and verbal abuse in the UK is still really high and that the FA's figures on this are, are way off. What Tom's research doesn't show is potential solutions for the future.
the league I play in has introduced the Simbin system. Andy Dimitriades is the referee in my league and we're going to see what he makes of the Simbins. And so Andy, the game was well managed today and there weren't really any incidents of abuse. Why do you think that was? Um, in the Southern Amateur League, we, we have been one of the pilot uh, leagues that have introduced sim bins. And I found that's helped immensely. And so the sim bin system is 10 minutes off the field for any player showing dissent towards the referee. Can you talk a little bit more about that? We've seen uh, cautions drop by about a third. Um, and I think that it's a great initiative which, when it's rolled out nationwide, will find that the levels of abuse felt in localised areas and in local leagues will drop. So it's great to talk to Andy about the Simbid system and how it's had a real effect on reducing dissent and abuse in our league. Best of luck in the next round. As of next season, Simbins are going to be rolled out to every amateur league in England, which could make a massive difference to grassroots referees. So we've come to watch a game at Ashton and Backwell at United, which is just outside Bristol. And we're here to watch a youth game, one of the first leagues in the country to introduce the Purple Shirts Initiative. Referees under the age of 18 wear a different colour shirt and a bid to reduce abuse from both supporters and players. So hopefully it'll make it a better game and enjoyable for all. How many times have you worn a purple shirt? So we received this in October and I've uh, wore this every game, which is about 10 games. And since you've started wearing a purple shirt, have you noticed uh, a lesser amount of, of abuse? Overall, I think it's working and it's definitely, it's definitely bringing the game to a more positive environment. Would you like to see this initiative brought into adult football? Yeah, definitely. Um, I've been speaking to a lot of referees, especially um, quite recently. That, um, Sometimes they do get a little bit of jit just because they're the younger referee. They might turn up and then the players think, oh look, we've got a younger referee, we can give them a little bit of stick. But by them knowing, by wearing a purple shirt, it might just give them, a little, make, give them time to think why we're here doing a job for them. So Roger, you're the referee development officer at the Gloucestershire FA. Are there any other initiatives going through or have planned in the future? In conjunction with the coloured shirts, we're looking to increase the amount of mentoring support we're able to offer our young referees. It's something that we've struggled to do, in all honesty, because of the resourcing issue. In recent years, have you, have you seen that, 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 that level rise or, or drop? What's been the, what's been the trend? In general, the, the number of volunteers has, has dropped to, across the board in football, not just within refereeing. But it's, it, it's true to say that the volunteer network is still very strong and we are encouraging more people to get involved. And um, because of that, we, we, we are being successful in retaining and increasing the number of referees that we've got. It looks like the Purple Shirts initiative is working and seems like a relatively inexpensive solution to the problem of abuse towards referees at youth level, particularly from coaches and parents on the sidelines. There are no plans to roll this out nationwide yet, but certainly in Bristol and Gloucestershire, it's been a big success and that everybody here is backing it. For referees like Ryan Hampson and for organisations like Ref Support, one of their big worries is that they're not being listened to. So we've come to Wembley to meet Farai Halam, a senior refereeing officer, and we're going to ask him if the FA plan to take on any new ideas, and if not, what they plan to do to combat refereeing abuse. As somebody that goes out and deals with referees on the ground every week, what do you think kind of your your biggest challenges uh, in combating abuse? So, so many challenges in refereeing. I mean, you, you have to look at the physical aspects of getting more. Constantly, every week, you're developing your softer skills. So your communication is key. Your conflict management is key. You talk about abuse. That with, with experience comes in how to manage things, how to conflict manage better, how to communicate better, how to manage a game of football better. And every week, the referees will get better. Abuse, no one likes to see it in the game. No. But it's got to be individual led. And I know that we've got a renewed, reinvigorated respect campaign, which really does put the onus on the individual to look after your own behaviour, and that's a real positive. Can you talk about how the respect campaign has changed? The latest part of the respect campaign is all about positivity, all about parents, coaches, referees, players, everyone involved in the game, every participant having a positive mindset. At the moment, to me and, and to a couple of the referees that we've spoken to, the, ref, the respect campaign maybe is something that is seen uh, maybe on a banner or on a badge. Is there, are there any plans for the respect campaign to sort of bring in slightly more practical um, improvements? Yes, I think the respect campaign is part of a bigger picture and a bigger piece. And us as the FA, we've had a renewed um, emphasis, I guess, with the county FAs throughout the 
18-19 season around supporting our new referees and it's a real big focus for us is to support referees in their first two years. We tend to see referees who stay within refereeing for their first two years will stay with us for 5, 10, 15 years and beyond. It's not always easy going out and managing 18 or 22 people when you're 15 or 16. It's something you've probably never done before. Um, if you put yourself in those shoes, it can be a bit daunting at times. Yeah. So to have a, a mentor and someone who's there to support you really is, really is important. That relies heavily on either paying somebody to be there, whether that's a development officer on a salary or on volunteers. Um, volunteers have sort of dwindled recently. Is there a sort of drive to maybe get more of those out there? Yeah, so very fortunate in refereeing. We have a real sense of community and that is absolutely shown by those who give back. So you'll see referees from the elite level, you'll see referees who are new to refereeing still already willing to give something back to our newer referees. That for us is fantastic. I don't think I'm alone in thinking that volunteers make football happen in this country, especially in grassroots football. Vo grassroots football is on the foundation of volunteers and we're fortunate and that we appreciate what people do um, and there's always more that we can do, definitely. Going into the meeting with the FA and Farai, we were concerned that they were going to be quite guarded. And whilst they weren't able to answer some questions around funding, there is a progression here. They're talking to charities like Ref Support, they're starting to answer our questions and initiatives like the Purple Shirts and the Symbian system are definitely a step in the right direction. But one of the biggest problems here is that the onus is on the individual to report the abuse and so many referees have lost faith in the system. So much so that they won't report the incident in the first place or, like Ella, they fall out of the game entirely. This means that the FA's figures on abuse could be completely wrong and much more time and money needs to be spent on these new ideas because at the moment the Respect campaign just isn't cutting it.